Yo guys, right now we have new limited merch over on Teespring, and I just revent my Patreon with some brand new perks, early thumbnail access, as well as a surprise charm every month. Also, I stream Best Team for Radical Red right here. Sub the Zora for Best Team for Radical Red Let's Play, episode 1's up by the way. Sage, anime. Follow me on my socials, especially Instant TikTok. I'm getting really active out there. You may even get subtle hints for videos and cute pet photos. All these will be in the description below and in the ad card above. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I don't know how to start out this intro. All I know is that today, we're gonna be doing the top 10 strongest moves in Pokemon. In this video, I'm gonna be going off base power alone, but in a tight spot, I will use secondary effects, beneficial or negative. Another factor that needs to be mentioned is that we will not be kenning Z moves. Z moves are kinda just all over the place and are only really exclusive to Generation 7. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna be covering regular Pokemon moves. In the future, I plan on doing the top 10 best moves in Pokemon, where I will be talking more about combinations and abilities and such. So be on the lookout for that. All right though, with all that out of the way, let's just dive right into this power. Starting off today, we have a few powerful moves who share the 130 base power. I'm talking about Calyrex Ice Rider's signature move, Glacial Lance, which has no secondary effect or drawback, it's just a really good strong physical ice step attack. There's also Reshiram's signature move, Blue Flare, which has a 20% chance to burn the target, and Zekrom's move, Bolt Strike, which has a 20% chance to paralyze the opponent. Now, these are the most notable attacks in the 130 base power family that doesn't come with some sort of downside. We do have a few other options in this category, but they have drawbacks like higher recoil, two turn attacks, or they reduce stats after usage. Those are some pretty big hindrances, hence why I chose to focus on the three moves mentioned earlier. Despite the hindrances though, they're all quite powerful. I know a certain starter Pokemon which loves Leaf Storm for example. Just passing number 10, our last resort, Boom Burst and Psycho Boost. The base power on these moves is 140. Last resort only works if all the moves in the user's set are pretty much out of power points. Boom Burst is a straight power, and I can say that Choice Specs Explod absolutely loves it. Psycho Boost is Deoxys signature move. It's pretty much a stronger base power Draco Meteor, except for Psychic type. And honestly, that's pretty much it. Deoxys with this move is also pretty busted. Up next, at number 8, we have Water Spout, Eruption, and Dragon Energy. The really awesome aspect about these moves is that they all do damage based on the user's HP. At full HP, these attacks have 150 base power. There are other base 150 attacks, but these ones have easier conditions. All the other ones are more based off of Recharge, Recoil, or 2 turn attacks. If you stack Eruption and Water Spout with full HP in the Sun or Rain, it's pretty much over, and all you have to have is full HP. That's pretty nuts. Dragon Energy can't be buffed with weather, but it's still a great move. In fact, this is a brand new move straight from the Crown Tundra DLC. And from what I've seen on Reggie Draco, it's pretty destructive. These moves are also really effective if you have a Choice Scarf or Specs you've attached. The extra power and speed are always useful to have. Sharing the number 7 slot are the signature moves of Generation 8's Eternatus and Generation 7's Necrozma. The differences between these two moves are next to none. They are both special attacks with a base power of 160, which needs a turn to recharge after usage. And they both are stab for each respective Pokemon. Eterna Beam being Dragon and Prismatic Laser being Psychic. However, the main difference is that Prismatic Laser has 100% accuracy, while Eterna Beam only has 90%. As third legendaries, they definitely both sport quite powerful moves to make themselves known as powerhouses in their respective regions. Straight from the Galar region, we got ourselves two really powerful fossil Pokemon in Dracozolt and Dracovish. Both of those Pokemon have some really powerful signature moves if they go first. Firstly, there's Bolt Beak from Dracozolt and Arctozolt, which have a base power of 170. It is a physical electric type move, which from Dracozolt is boosted by Hustle. But we're not counting abilities for this particular list. However, that being said, I can't deny that Bolt Beak is a very powerful attack. Following Bolt Beak, we have Ficious Rend, which is the water type version of Bolt Beak. 
To work better for Dracovish, they made Fish's friend a biting type attack to work in tandem with a strong job ability. One last dope part about these moves is that they both have the potential to be powered up. Fish's rend being powered by the rain and bolt beak with electric terrain. I think it's pretty safe to say you don't want to be on the receiving end of these attacks. Dead in the middle, we find the single strongest fire type move, which belongs to the victory Pokemon, Victini. The move I'm talking about, of course, is the 180 base physical power fire type move, V Create. V Create, when used, lowers the user's defense, special defense, and speed. However, there is no reward without a little bit of risk. And in some cases, this downside can even be a strength. Lowering speed can help the user go first on the next turn under Trick Room. There aren't many Pokemon who can stand in the way of this powerful attack. Creeping down into the top four, we have Self Destruct, Flail, and Reversal, all boasting 200 base power. These moves are all very destructive. However, they all have a downside that has to be met. Self Destruct is pretty much Chiaotzu versus Nappa, and Flail and Reversal are based on how low the user's HP is. These two moves are just Reverse Eruption, Water Spout, and Dragon Energy, which is sad because Flail and Reversal have more base power. Okay, at number 3, we have a level 86 Majin Vegeta with the Brave Nature using Explosion at 250 base power. That move is really destructive. It just sucks when Majin Buu has Damp. Now, what could possibly be stronger than an explosive attack that sacrifices the user? I mean, I'm sure you have some ideas. But there are two moves in Pokemon which both have the capability to build up so high they reach a massive base power of 960. Do you have an idea of what I'm talking about yet? I'm talking about a move which has haunted Pokemon players since Generation 2. That of course being Rollout and its Ice Tap counterpart Ice Ball. Now here's the deal with Ice Ball and Rollout. At first glance, these moves look very underwhelming. But by landing 5 consecutive rollouts or ice balls, the 5th attack will have a base power of 960. Not to mention a rollout can actually be even more powerful if a defense curl is used prior. In my research, I couldn't find anything to support the same for ice ball. So in that case, I do believe rollout is just a bit stronger. But their end base power is still the same at 960. And that's why these two moves share the number 2 spot on this list. And the absolute strongest move in Pokemon is none other than the one-hit KO moves. I mean, what else is really stronger than that? Now I know you can argue, but Mystic, one-hit KO moves don't work against duty. And then that, I say, sure. But there are also several moves on the list which can be responded to so that the move does nothing. In terms of pure output and strength, getting a guaranteed one-hit KO, if these moves connect, is as strong as it gets. The moves in question being Sheer Cold, Guillotine, Fissure, and Horn Drill. The only downside to the Oko moves are their incredibly low accuracy and how they can't be used if the user is of a lower level than the target. I will say though, it feels oh so satisfying when they do connect 30% of the time. And that's why, without a doubt, the one hit KO moves are the strongest moves in Pokemon. Well, that pretty much wraps up this list for the top 10 strongest moves in Pokemon. I think these moves are the strongest, but if you think there are stronger ones out there that are better, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Also be sure to let me know if you'd be interested in seeing the top 10 best moves in Pokemon. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream all sorts of games from Pokemon, to Fire Emblem, to Zelda, and much more. I also have an anime channel called Mystic Sage, where I do anime reviews, rankings, and countdowns. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to support me even further and gain cool perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.